In the first tutorial for logical decisions, we described how to input the goals hierarchy. Now we're going to focus on the individual alternatives and input data for each alternative. The data is stored in a matrix format. We will start by editing the default alternative, which is automatically created. Then we'll add two more alternatives. And in inputting the data, we'll indicate that in many cases, the data is a single data point. In a few instances, it's a discrete distribution. And we'll also indicate how you deal with labeled data. Here are the data for three alternative bulbs. One's a fluorescent, another one's an incandescent, and the third one is a halogen. We have the individual data points for the lumens. We also have the individual data points for the purchase. But as you know, for operating costs, there's a probability distribution, and that probability distribution was originally created because we never know how many hours you can actually leave the bulb on. We used, however, the same probabilities for the three different values for the fluorescent, incandescent, and halogen. Recall that when we originally set up the goals hierarchy for each measure, we had to put in a range of values. In this example, you'll notice that the minimum range for purchase is 25, the maximum is 65, and the minimum operating cost is 65, and the maximum is 285. In the data on the previous slide, you notice the operating costs actually range from 65 to 285, but when we input the measures, we typically like to have a nice round number and also to allow for the possibility there might also be a value that's added later on, another alternative that's outside that range. So instead of 65 to 285 for operating costs, we used a range of 50 to 300. And in purchase costs, instead of a range of 25 to 65, we used a range of 25 to 75. We now begin inputting the data into the data matrix. You see the goals hierarchy in front of you but you might be able to see in the upper left-hand corner another screen behind it, which has matrix best lighting goal. We're going to click on that. We now see the matrix for the best lighting goal. We start by editing and renaming the new alternative by double-clicking on it. We simply click on new alternative and write in the name that we're going to use. First alternative we're going to input data for is the fluorescent bulb. We now start inputting the data by selecting a specific value. In this case, we start with the amount for the fluorescent light bulb. We simply overwrite the amount and type in 900 lumens. We move on to the purchase variable and input its value. We move on to the measure type, and that's a label variable. Notice it already says F-L-U-O-R, so we really don't have to type anything in. But we're going to double-click on it to see what happens when you have a label measure. And you'll notice the scroll down menu just lists all the alternatives and all you have to do is select the appropriate value. We're now ready to input the probabilistic data for the operating costs for the fluorescent light bulb. When you double click on a numeric value, a new window appears which allows you to input probabilistic data. The define at probabilistic level has a number of alternatives. The default assumption is a point estimate. You could select a normal distribution or a uniform distribution. We're going to select a discrete distribution, and we have three discrete points. The three-point estimate actually refers to something totally different. When you define a discrete distribution, the default assumption is there are two levels, there are two values, and they have equal likelihood. We're going to reset those. When you update the number of levels to three, the software automatically changes the default assumptions and puts in 0.33 for each of the probabilities and also resets the levels. We're going to override that with our data. However, before we do that, just as one aside, if you had actually kept these values, you might get an error message because the 0.33s do not add up to exactly one, and the software requires it to add up to exactly one. We overwrite the probabilities and the different levels, and then we click OK. After clicking OK, we now go back to this screen, and we've completed this task, so we click OK again. Notice on this screen that the operating data appears now in pink. This indicates that there's a probability distribution behind that value, and the single value they put in the box is the expected value. We next click on Edit, and we're going to add another alternative. An Add an Object window appears. The default is we're adding an alternative. We leave it that way and click OK. When you click on Adding an Alternative, this is the window that appears. LDW allows you the option of copying from an existing alternative. Click Yes if you thought the alternative was very similar to a previous alternative. We're going to click No. The Alternative Properties window appears. We overwrite the word New Alternative, and we type in INCAND to represent the second alternative. 
The second alternative appears now in the window, and we're going to start inputting data starting with the operating cost. The define a probabilistic level window opens. We once again click on discrete distribution and get ready to input three data points. After changing all the data for the incandescent alternative, this is what the window will look like. Notice the operating cost is again pink. In this case, the expected value is 216. We're going to add a third alternative, but this time we're going to actually see what happens when I use copy from an existing alternative option. In this case, we're going to copy from an existing alternative, so we click yes. For the purposes of this illustration, we're going to assume we want to copy from the INCND alternative, so we're going to click on that and select it. The default name for this new alternative is INCAND1. We're going to overwrite that with the word halogen. Notice that there is now a third alternative halogen. It was inserted between floor and INCAN because the default assumption right now is to list the alternatives alphabetically. The second row and the third row of data are identical because we copied from INCAND alternative. If the data for the two alternatives were approximately the same, we would only have to edit a few of the values. But in this case, we're going to have to edit each of the cells. So first we change the amount to 1120, and now we're going to work on the operating cost. Because we had used the copy alternative option, when we look at the finest discrete distribution, the default assumption is that there are three levels. The probabilities are assumed to be the same as for the other alternative, which in this case is true. Level 1, level 2, and level 3 are assumed to be the same as before, but those are the three values we're going to have to change. This window shows all of the data for the three alternatives. We're going back to the goals hierarchy window. We want to look at something that relates to the least and most preferred values that appear in the scale window. So we're going to click on purchase. After clicking on purchase, the measure properties window opens. And now we're going to go on to the scale window. I want to call your attention to the information way to the right of the most preferred level and least preferred level. Notice you'll see alternatives most preferred 25. That means in the data matrix we input the lowest cost was 25, and then alternatives least preferred, the highest cost that we input was 65. We had set a range though that was slightly higher to make it 75, so that the range is now $50. We're now going to look at the same information with regard to operating cost. We're now looking at the scale window for operating costs. Now remember, operating costs involves probabilistic data. Notice to the right, it says alternatives most preferred is $70. That corresponds to the expected value for fluorescent bulbs. The alternative's least preferred value is 245, and that's the expected value for the halogen bulb. But in fact, the data is actually includes values outside that range. The lowest value in the original data set is $65, and the highest value is $285. So when we set the most preferred level and least preferred level, we must encompass the $65 and the $285, and we went slightly outside those values to allow for the possibility that we might have another alternative. So we set the most preferred level at 50, the least preferred level at 300, and the entire range is $250. This completes the second tutorial in which we demonstrated how to input data into the matrix and also review the least and best preferred values for the alternatives. The next tutorial will focus on trade-offs, assigning weights to the various measures and objectives.